All right, welcome to Tollefson Physics. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at force diagrams that can occur at an angle and how to analyze those. And so a force diagram uh, is the same as the force diagrams that we we're talking about when the components are perpendicular to each other. And so now we're just going to apply it to other situations. So I wanna show you two different situations about what's going on. And so my first situation is a bad attempt at drawing a wagon. <laughs> and so I'm gonna pull this wagon at a constant velocity towards the right. And so I'm gonna draw a force diagram based upon that. And so the forces are the same types of forces that we were looking at before. But now those forces don't have to be perpendicular to each other. So for example, if I'm gonna draw a force diagram, let's draw it right here. I'm going to draw the center of mass and I'm going to look at the wagon. So I should draw a circle around the wagon, see what it's touching. So it's touching the ground and it's touching that person's hands. All right. So I'm going to have to incorporate that into my force diagram somehow. And so I'm going to start with, you know, we're on the planet Earth. And we're going to always have the force due to gravity and it's on the wagon by the Earth. All right. So it's always between two objects. That's our one force at a distance. That's not touching the wagon. The entire Earth's not touching the wagon. All right, we're gonna have a normal force. And so the normal force is right there. Let me leave, let me write it way up here so I have room. So on the wagon by the ground. And I'm gonna emphasize that it's by the ground, perpendicular to the ground, because that's what normal means. Okay. And so I have, I'm pulling it. So actually, I'm going to call it that. I'm just going to have a pulling force. It, you know, maybe it's a tension force. Maybe I could call it that instead. But it's on the wagon, wagon, and it's by the person. Okay, the person's pulling on the rope. Uh, or not rope, uh, wagons have like a handle. So it's on the handle. Okay, this is cer certainly an unbalanced force diagram because if we have some sort of force going to the right, there must be something to the left. And the easiest way to probably rationalize that is a force of friction. And so that will be, where will I write this? On the wagon, wagon, by the ground. And that tends to be a parallel force to the ground. So we actually have the ground doing two different things. We've got, we've got this perpendicular force and we've got this parallel force uh, doing different things. All right, well, is this a balanced force diagram? Well, I tried to draw a balanced force diagram. But how do I prove it? So there's two ways to prove it. One way to prove it is I can put my arrows tail to head. What do I mean by that? So I'm gonna move this force of gravity kind of just off to the side so that I can move these vectors. These are all vectors, technically. So they have a length and they have an angle. And so both of those are important. So let's call this my force due to gravity arrow. And then let's take this force of friction arrow, which I drew like this. It's perpendicular to that. It's about the right size, okay. And then I had a normal force arrow and actually this normal force arrow I, I know is actually smaller than the force due to gravity. And the reason for that is I'm pulling up a little bit. So I'm actually lifting the wagon up a little bit. Um, and then my force of pull, if I've done this right, which I, looks like I did, um, goes back to where I started at an angle. So this means my net force is zero. This is a vector addition way of graphically showing that, all right? But there's another way, and I kind of ran out of room here. So what I'm gonna do is draw a larger version of this, force due to gravity, normal force, whoops, uh, force of friction, and the lifting, well, the pull. All right, another way to look at this as it focuses is I can think about this in only an XY coordinate system. So if I think of an XY coordinate system, this is already in the X plane, this is already in the Y plane, so those are great. This one, however, is not. And so I can actually break arrows up. So the, I, I can add arrows like I showed on the other slide, 
but I can also break them up because an arrow that follows the x-axis plus an arrow that follows the y-axis will actually give me the diagonal arrow. So really this is the force pull in the x direction and this is the force pull in the y direction. So why is that important? Well, let's see. I have one right arrow and one left arrow. They have to be the same because it's moving at a constant velocity. Now I have to be careful here. I have this and this. So the normal force and the force of pull in the y direction are two up arrows. And that has to equal what is supposed to say FG in the downward direction. So I could actually write that mathematically just to be really clear. So the f normal force plus the force pull in the y direction is going to equal the force due to gravity. So my two up arrows equals my down arrow. Um, I mean, I could write it for the other one too, just for the sake of completeness. So my left arrow equals my right arrow. All right. So, you know, eventually we're going to be putting numbers to this. And so that's why it's important to be able to do this. All right. I'm going to do one more example. And that other example is I've got a car. All right. Let's just say a box. I'm just going to have a huge box. Boring, but hey, it works. So I'm going to have this huge box just sitting on a hill. So I'm going to draw a force diagram for that as well. So to draw a force diagram, very similar to before, and I think I'll draw it here, and I won't draw everything out again, but we have a force due to gravity pointing down. And then, like I said, I like to put the hill because then I can visualize what normal means, and normal means perpendicular. So there's a normal force that's perpendicular to the hill. And quite honestly, this would slide downhill if I don't add some sort of a friction force to it as well. So that's what the force diagram would look like. If I do my head to tail, this should add up to zero, right? So if I move my force due to gravity, it's about that length right there. And then let's do normal force, which is kind of like here. All right, so it's about the right length. And then that leaves me my little force of friction force. So if I drew those all correctly at the right angles, I should end up at zero, which I managed to do that. Okay, now this is a case where choice of the X, Y coordinate system is really important because quite honestly, if this force of friction goes away, where's this gonna go? It's gonna go downhill. So it's best to have your coordinate system parallel and perpendicular to the hill for that reason. And so the coordinate system that I'm going to pick here is along the hill. So I'm gonna put X, it doesn't matter if I have X up the hill or down the hill um, and Y. So I'm just gonna draw it that way because now I'm gonna draw components of that. And so what are the components? Well, the force of friction is already parallel to X, so that's good, I don't have to do anything. The normal force is already parallel to Y, that's good, so those are in the X, Y plane. Force due to gravity is not. So that's what I'm going to wanna to do. And I'm only gonna draw two arrows that are in the direction of the X and Y axes. And so usually I like to go from the dot. I like to go straight down. You could go down the hill first too. It doesn't matter. They're arrows. They do the same thing. But this would be my force due to gravity in the y direction. And then my x direction is going to be in the x plane. So I try to draw it in a way where now I have to follow the x plane. That's in my way, so I'm going to move it. And this gives me the force of gravity in the x direction. And this right here is my total force due to gravity. So these two arrows add up to that one arrow. And once again, why did I do this? The up arrow equals the down arrow. The right arrow equals the left arrow. And if I want to write that out mathematically, let's say the right arrow equals the left arrow. The up arrow equals the down arrow. And so, I have all of my forces balanced out. So there's two different ways to look at it. And depending on what type of, of situation you're in, you can look at it either way, depending on where you believe the math is going to take you. And so these were two examples of how to be able to uh, manipulate a coordinate system so that you can look, still look and see if up equals down, right equals left. 
And soon we'll be looking at this using uh, quantitative analysis.